So here's the 8 kVA day inverter with a Volta Stage 2 battery. That's 7.6 kilowatt hour. And I'm going to show you the smart load settings. I've, I'm on smart load at the moment. The smart load is now pulling. Now the panels I've got is 4.4 kilowatts max. So that's pretty close to max. The smart load is drawing just over 2 kilowatts. Two of that is a 2 kilowatt element in a geezer, which is my second geezer. I'll explain the first and second geezer usage on smart load just now. And the rest is going into the battery and which is at 81% so I've left a bit of battery in my smart load settings because I know there was going to be excess um, solar so I do want another load so I've got about 20% of battery that can also be added to the 2 kilowatts of the um, geezer that's pulling now so 2.2 is the load and the battery about 1 kilowatts because I've got some solar extra there so i'm using 100 percent of all my solar at the moment because the battery will vary according to the solar if it was four it's four if it's three it's three and the battery will do the variable part but basically the geezer that's two kilowatts is on now and that's been uh, powered by the smart load i'll explain that now I've opened up the geyser. It's a quick hot 150 liter. It's still got the 3 kilowatt element in. I wanted to change it to 2 kilowatts and then I tested it and I realized I don't really need to do that. I can uh, still do it uh, with a smart load. Let me explain. I'll explain the smart load settings now. This is my ACDB and I've got a switch there for the smart load feed which is just a disconnect. Um, here I've got an auto change over switch. It's on auto at the moment and it's on the smart load. That smart load is feeding. It's just flickering because of the um, video, not uh, in real life. Because it's on, it goes to that position uh, as a default position. If I switch on this one, which is now also on, which is my ESCOM going through a timer, it won't switch over. Uh, the smart load needs to fall away for it to switch over. That's how the auto changeover works. I'm just going to switch this off. So what I do is whenever the smart load comes through, whenever there is smart load and it's above 2,500 uh, watts on the panels, I actually pull it down to 2,150 watts because my lowest load is 150 watts. So if I add the 2 kilowatts, then I'm above that what I want. Um, this switch is on, it goes through to the output of the auto changeover, which is the geezer at the back that I just showed you. So it's going to start powering that geezer instantly. It's going to go uh, up to 3 kilowatts. Obviously, it's going to go up to 55 degrees Celsius, 60 degrees. You can even put it higher. I wouldn't go higher than 60. That's a safe uh, margin. You don't actually you're not allowed to put it higher than 60 degrees celsius because it becomes unsafe should that not happen if it's cloudy i'll have this on my phone and i'll switch this timer on let's say five to seven it'll go over and it'll start heating it if i do that in any case and there was smart load it's going to switch over it's going to give it power but it's not going to do anything because the Thermostat's just going to say I'm hot already. I'm warm. Thank you. I'm not going to use any ESCOM. So, but it's summer now and I'm expecting a lot of sun all the time. So I'm going to leave it off in any case. If it becomes cloudy, I go on my phone and I just switch it on for 5 to 7 or 5 to 6, whatever I want to do. So this is now heating this geezer at the back there up to, I think I set it to 55 or 60 degrees. And we then switch it off. I don't switch it on again. We are only two people who are showering on it. So it's hot enough. It stays hot throughout the night. In the morning, it's even hot enough for us to shower in the summer because we set it to 60 and we only need about 40 degrees to shower. So this is how this one is going to work. Now, the second geezer I'm going to explain now is a reservoir geezer, which also comes from my smart load output and that is through another geezer let me go and show you right this is the second uh, dv this is the smart load dv so my smart load from the main dv comes in here that's a 25 amp uh, disconnect two pole 
it can it goes to this one and that one that's the two geezers this one is the geezer i showed you inside so the auto change over goes through here to the geezer so this is the chip sheets for that geezer 20 amp the second geezer is in the roof it's a 200 liter with two kilowatt element in it that goes on secondly if this one's thermostat switches off it then routes the power to this relay so this relay is on when this one is on when this one switches off the thermostat switches it off in other words the element is off then the power to the element is the same power that drives this relay the element goes off this relay goes off and the normally closed will then close and the smart load will go through to the second one so that's how you do the one and then the other one in sequence this one is then a 200 liter geyser which is before a small little harbor um, split magnetic uh, inverter geyser it can be any other geyser as well the use is this goes to a reservoir geyser a, a, a geyser before your main geyser any excess solar that meets the smart load parameters will go through here and be converted into heat so that you use all your solar uh, as a load you just you need a load for that solar to be used otherwise you lose your solar so i'm converting the excess solar into heat into this one and then it feeds the cold input of the main geyser so sometimes the main geyser is never ever going to be used to switch on it doesn't heat anything because it might get 60 degrees and you've set it to 50 um, but it might vary if it's cloudy it might be 30 it might be 40 whatever solar there is you're going to put it into heat and it's going to be variable but then you put it through your main geyser which is not variable so that's how you save on that but there's my settings i've changed it a little bit because it was cloudy this morning so i set my battery a bit lower you can see the 5 to 10 is now 25 percent i normally don't do it below 30 but i did that just to not use my battery unnecessarily because i wanted the solar to pick up um, all of them are grid charged but they should not use any grid this is just for a backup if there's really no solar then it'll go down to the first slot 40 percent and then the grid will keep it at 40 percent i'll be using grid basically if the battery was below 40 percent it would have charged by the grid up to 40 but because it's coming down 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 you'll see the last slot 9 to 12 is 50 so it'll go down to 50 stabilize at 50 then it'll go down in the morning 0 to uh, 5 to 40 so it's going to go down and stabilize down and stabilize down and stabilize until it gets to 25 percent but by 10 o'clock the end of that slot really there should be some solar and the 25 should have picked up to about 30 then 10 to 12 surely there should be more sun it should get above 30 so that by 12 you should be at 50 at least hopefully normally in any case then you would not use any escom uh, grid power so 12 to 4 it should at least have been to 50 otherwise the grid will pick it up and push it to 50 why 50 that's my minimum backup for a long load shed if we got four hours load shed or anything like that i want it to be at least 50 the same thing till nine o'clock and then the same thing till 12 o'clock now let's say your normal good condition you're going to get uh, solar that goes and pushes it up to 70%, up to 100%. It will then start using the battery and it'll uh, bring it down till 12 o'clock at night. I'll still be above 50%. Uh, in the morning, it will go down to 40 and then in the early morning down to 25 And now that's it's a small slot of 25% where I kind of take a risk that load shed might kick in. And then I've only got 15% reserve because it shuts down at 10%. So that 15% should carry me through because if, let's say, there is a load shed, uh, a big one, four hours, then at least the sun is out and I should get some kind of solar. If it's cloudy, it's rainy, still should get something. We should and they just know it's worst case scenario. You've got to go low on power 
don't put on any geezers or anything like that uh, but otherwise I want to use my battery as much as possible now I'm hoping that it doesn't reach 25% then I'm off grid basically that the Sun picks up before then it's very close to that uh, but normally I don't go down to lower than 30 but in this case I did so let me show you the smart load settings quickly right there's the smart load settings the smart load output is ticked I've put it on 2,150 watt in my case my minimum load is 150 watt more or less that's the real minimum that it ever draws and I want it to be 2,000 and more uh, then under micro inverter input if you don't tick it then those percentages um, are reckoned for the smart load output that is the battery on 80% and battery off 70% in other words, when the battery reaches 80% and my panels are above 2150 watts both those parameters are met smart load switches off uh, on sorry if my solar drops below one uh, 2150 for quite a little bit uh, and my bat or my battery either or my battery drops below 70% the smart load switches off either one of those two so that's what that is for if I now tick the micro inverter input there will be different percentages on the on and off so they change the interface a little bit uh, it was a bit confusing um, so that's how you said that uh, my 3000 watt geezer will kick on first so let's say my battery is 80% before my solar reaches 2150 in that scenario it will quick uh, kick on the smart load the solar will only be 2150 a little bit above and it'll keep on rising 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 that means my 3000 uh, watt element is going to draw more power than what the solar provides so the battery will supplement that for a little while and that's great for me because it's early morning it's sun it's about to do some work i want to give it as much work as i can so two three thousand watts is going to be from the geezer and eventually when that geezer is hot and it only takes about 30 minutes in summer maybe a, an hour um, then there's excess because it switches over to the two kilowatt um, element on the second geezer and my solar is probably close to 4000 watts so what do i do with the rest there's nothing to do for it so now the battery will use the rest and it's going to be variable on the battery it's going to always draw maximum of all of my solar so it's the 2000 of the geezer it's the 150 200 300 400 of the household and then whatever is left battery so whatever is left going to go to batteries it's always going to be maximum solar used